Namaste and a very, very good evening to all of you. I welcome you to my channel, The Outlier. My name is Mithun. In today's video, I'll be talking about what are lagged variables. Even before I proceed to demonstrate how to create lagged variables in IBM SPSS, may I request you to subscribe to my channel, also like and share my videos. Let's begin by asking a simple question as to what are lagged variables. In time series analysis, lag variables or lag variables are the values of a variable at previous time points. I repeat, in time series analysis, lag variables or lag variables are the values of a variable at previous time points. In other words, a lag variable is a past value of the time series that is used as a predictor of the current value of that variable. Let's understand lag variable through a simple example. Suppose you want to predict what is the share price of a particular company for tomorrow. A reasonable estimate of the share price for tomorrow would be the share price for today. Let's now assume one more case wherein you want to estimate what is the share price of, let's say, IBM today. You can use yesterday's value to predict today's value. Sometimes you can go two steps back and use day before yesterday's value as well to predict today's share price for IBM. When you use yesterday's value to forecast today's value, that is called as a lag variable. It is a lag of order one. If you're going two steps back to predict the current value, that is called as lag order two. Similarly, if you go three steps back to predict the current price, it is called as lag of the order three. There are many reasons for using lagged variables in time series. The first is to capture autocorrelation in time series. Question is, what do we mean by autocorrelation? Autocorrelation is the correlation of a variable with its own past values. I repeat, autocorrelation is the correlation of a variable with its own past values. A lag variable can be a good predictor of the current value of a time series variable if there is strong autocorrelation. I'd like to repeat this point. A lag variable can be a good predictor of the current value of a time series variable if there is strong autocorrelation. Lag variables can be used to account for seasonality and trends in the time series. For example, if a time series exhibits a strong seasonal pattern, we can create lag variables that capture the same seasonal pattern at previous time points. Similarly, if a time series exhibits a trend, we can create lag variables that capture the trend at the previous time points. Overall, the use of lag variables in time series analysis can improve the accuracy of forecasts. So this is one of the main important reason as to why we create lag variables. It helps us improve the accuracy of the forecasts and helps in identifying patterns and relationships in the data. However, it is important to select the appropriate lag variables based on the nature of time series and the objective of the analysis. With this background about lag variables, let me now proceed to demonstrate how to create lag variables in SPSS. What you're seeing right now is the interface of SPSS. The first thing that I'll do is to load some data into SPSS. How do you load data? You can go to the file menu. Here, there's an option which is called as recently used data. There are 10 recently used data sets. I will choose the one right at the top, which is called as transposed underscore three. Let me click on this particular option. The moment I click on this particular option, you can see the file gets loaded. I've kept it very simple here for the purpose of clarity. The first variable here is the date variable. And the second variable is the wholesale price index of rise. When you look at the first record, 
it says in January 2001, the wholesale price index of rice was 164.8. In February 2001, the wholesale price index of rice reduced to 163.8. In the third record, that is for March 2001, the wholesale price index of rice increased to 165.1. When I go to the last record, you can see I have information at a monthly level till April 2010. For April 2010, the wholesale price index of rice was 251.6. Now, using this data, how do you create a lag variable for rise? To create a lag variable, what you need to do is click on the transform menu at the top. From the left side, you have the fifth menu that is transform. Let me go ahead and select transform. Under the transform menu, you have a lot of options. Let me click on the option create time series. I'll repeat. We have to go to the transform menu. In the transform menu, there's an option which is called as create time series. If we click on this, the moment I click on this, a new dialog box opens up. This dialog box is called as create time series dialog box. There are two boxes that SPSS displays. There's a box to the left side, which talks about the variable that we can use to create time series. And there's a box to the right side, which allows me to use the lag function. To select the variable rise, you can simply click on rise and hit the arrow. What this does is it pushes the variable rise into the dialog box to the right hand side. Please observe it says rise underscore one. What is this rise underscore one? This will be the name of the new variable equals diff. Diff is the function that create time series uses by default. So it is going to use the difference function on the variable namely rise one. I don't want SPSS to use the difference function. We can use difference in a different context. Here, I'm not interested in taking a difference. I'm interested in creating a lag. How do you create the lag for a particular variable? Let me draw your attention to the function option here. In the function option, the default function that is used is difference. Below this, you can see there's a box for order, which says one. The first order difference is taken by default. As I already mentioned, I don't want to look at difference. I want to create a lag variable. Therefore, I'll click on the drop down menu from the function list. When I click on the drop down menu, SPSS displays the different ways in which you can create time series. The first is to choose difference. The second option is seasonal difference. The third option is centered moving average. The fourth option would be prior moving average. Then you can also create time series using the running medians. The next option is cumulative sum. And then we have lag and lead. Last but not the least, you also have an option for smoothing. Since I'm interested in creating a lag for the wholesale price index of rice, I'm going to choose lag. You can see here, now what we have selected is lag. But in the dialog box up above, you can see the difference function is still applied. To change the function from difference to lag, we have to click on the change button here. You can see here, the moment I choose the change button, the difference option disappears and now the lag function will be used. 
So we are going to create a new variable, which is called as rise underscore one, which will be the lag variable for the wholesale price index of rice. Let me draw your attention to order. I have specified one here for order because I'm specifying the value as one for the order parameter. The first order lag will be created. Let me go ahead and hit the OK button. What you're seeing here is the output window of SPSS. In the output window, you can see the result of the lag variable that we have created. This is showing me the information at the aggregate level. You have important columns like series name, first observation, last observation, number of valid cases, and creating function that SPSS has used. The first observation starts from second row and the last observation is 112. The number of valid cases here would be 111. To see how the lag variable looks like, we can go back to SPSS data editor window. You can see here, this is the original value for the wholesale price index of rise. We have successfully created rise underscore one, which represents the lag variable for rise. The first cell here is blank because there is no information prior to January 2001. Take a look at February 2001. You can see here SPSS has entered the January 2001 value for wholesale price index of rise next to February. Similarly, when you look at the value for March 2001, the wholesale price index of rise is entered from February 2001. This pattern continues. The one question that you might ask me is, what is the point of creating the lag variable. Very simple. Let us say you want to predict the wholesale price index of rise using a regression model or a ARIMA model. There, you can use the wholesale price index of rise as the dependent variable and the first order lag for rise as the independent variable which simply means that yesterday's wholesale price index is used as the independent variable to predict today's wholesale price index. One question that you might ask is, why should we stop with yesterday's wholesale price index? Can't we look at day before yesterday's wholesale price index or the day prior to that? Of course, we can look at first order lag or second order lag or third order lag. We can use rise underscore one as the independent variable to predict the wholesale price index of rise. We don't need to stop at rise underscore one. I'm going to demonstrate how you can create the second order lag and the third order lag as well. How do we do this? We can go back to the transform menu. We had used the option create time series. I'm going to use that option once again. You can see here, create time series option is available. Let me select rise. Let me select the variable rise and push it into the canvas to the right hand side. As you can see here, this is creating this is using the difference function. I don't want to use the difference function. Instead of using the difference function, I'd like to use the lag function. Therefore, under the function option, let's click on the drop down menu and choose lag. Now I have to 
click on the change option. You can see here, now the lag function will be used on the rise variable. One change that I'd like to make here is instead of order one, I can choose order two. Let me now click change once again. You can see here, rise underscore two, this is a new variable that will be created, which will give me the wholesale price index of rise with a lag order of two. The same way, if I want to create a new variable with lag order three, I can repeat the same process. Here under the order parameter, I can specify three and hit the change button. You can see here, we have rise underscore one, which helps me create the lag of order one. I have rise underscore two, which helps me create lag for the order two. And last but not the least, I have rise underscore three, which helps me create a new variable with lag order three. Once we create these three new variables, we can go ahead and click on OK button. Change existing variable, I'll click on OK. You can see here, this is the output. We have rise underscore one or rise underscore two and rise underscore three. The first variable represents the lag of order one. Second variable represents lag of order two. And thirdly, we have the variable lag order three. If we go back to the data editor window, we have three newly created variables. This is the original variable for wholesale price index of rice. We have created the new variable rice with lag order one. This is a variable which represents the wholesale price index of rice with lag order two. And finally, we have the third variable which represents the wholesale price index of rice with lag order three. Now, we can use these three variables as the independent variable to predict the wholesale price index of rise. With this, I have come to the end of today's video. In today's video, we have seen how to create time series by using the lag function. At an overall level, the use of lag variables in time series analysis can improve the accuracy of the forecasts. This is a great trick which data scientists use. That is, they create or manufacture new independent variables from the dependent variable itself by using lag variables. This can greatly improve the accuracy of your forecast. And it also helps in identifying patterns and relationships in the data. However, it is important to select the appropriate lag variables based on the nature of the time series and the objective of the analysis. Here, I've stopped at creating three new variables. That is lag order one, lag order two, lag order three. You can go on to create lag four, five, six, sky is the limit. Which variables are relevant? Where should you choose? Where should you stop? What is the optimal lag order at which you need to stop? Should you stop at lag order 6 or 12? That depends largely on the domain that you're working in. It also depends on the analysis that you're carrying out with respect to the objective of the study. With this, I have come to the end of today's video. I request you to subscribe to my channel. Also, like and share my videos. Thank you very much for watching this particular video. Have a great day ahead.